we are slowly approaching the moment when DB5 will be finally released. Now, 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 now we have the public alpha, which is great. This version of DB5 means that you can already install your DB5 public alpha on your website and test it out. So it's a, it, is, it is recommended to do it only on staging websites or test websites. Nick Roach, during this video, I will leave you all the links down in the description below, just explains that, uh, yes, of course, it is an alpha, so uh, you should test it not on, uh, on live production and websites, but just in staging and uh, in test mode, in test mode, and uh, just uh, discover the beautiful stuff that are coming ahead in db5. Okay, this is very interesting. Uh, in the video, in the presentation video, we see that we can just head to the db5 link on um, Elegant Themes. As I was mentioning, I'll leave you all my affiliate links in the description below if you want to support my channel. And you can go here and try it di directly into the browser if you prefer, or you can click on the download the alpha button. This will ask you to log into your dashboard. And here you can go scroll down and download the DB5 Alpha, perfect. Once you download it, you can upload it on a website and uh, it is the DB theme. So uh, let's make a quick test here. We will go and upload it right here. Okay. Appearance, themes, and upload, new theme. Yeah, I want to, I want to put my hands on the DB5 Alpha. <laughs> 6,888 themes. Upload theme. Where is it? Where is it? DB5, there it is. Open. Install now. Wow. That's great. That's cool. They have rebuilt all the foundation of DB. Activate. Okay, Nick Roach was uh, was mentioning the fact that we, we will find a lot of bugs in this version. Still, it is still an alpha and uh, we can contribute. Basically, we can go and uh, test things out and have some feedback. We can communicate all our feedback if we find some bugs, if we uh, notice something that is not, isn't working well in the UI, etc., etc. We can go and communicate it directly on the website, clicking here and going to open a support ticket, not a support, a feedback ticket. Yeah, this is great. So uh, let's go and see what happens. Why it is asking me here to log into, yeah, I just have to log into DB to activate my license, of course. Okay, so this is the first check. Okay, so if you're installing this version on a version when you where you are already using DB4, um, it will ask you if you want to migrate the old modules and content to DB5. And uh, Nick Roach here was mentioning the. Oh, I, I accidentally showed you my analytics. <laughs> my channel is uh, is starting to grow right now, and I hope that it will grow even more. So if you, if you want to leave me a thumbs up button right now, please give me a thumbs up button. And uh, right here it says that you you will have a migrator. Yes, if you already install DB5 on a website when there is a DB4 active, there will be this migrator open up um, and uh, asking you if you want to migrate the old content to the new uh, content based on DB5 modules. Of course, there are some modules that are still in development, so uh, DB5 uh, has some missing modules in uh, regarding DB4, of course. And uh, uh, Nick explains the fact that you will find all the messages right here during the migration process. So for example, here, when I'm on the dashboard, I go to the DB5 migrator and I can follow along and check if all my modules are compatible and ready to be used in DB5. If there are some modules that are not compatible and not ready in DB5, you will just have them wrapped in a short code system, the legacy DB4 system. And so on that pages, things will load uh, slow as always. While on the other pages, everything will be very fast. Let's go and see in the front end Okay, nothing has changed here. I hope that in the next versions, once DB5 has be, will be released, they will change this standard page because it, it, it is not nice, <laughs> not at all. At least with a, a standardized wireframe homepage, for example. Anyway, let's go and see wh what happens in the page creation process. Let's create a new page and let's enable the DB Builder. Let's call it DB Test. DB Test. DB5 test. Yes. Okay, I like the clean experience here. It is beautiful. Let's click on DB Builder. Okay. It is quite, oh, nice. <laughs> nice loader. Okay. I don't like the footer. Like, why, why do I have to see this footer here? 
This is weird, okay. Anyway, the rest is uh, loading very fast, very fast, incredible. I have the dark mode and the light mode. Dark mode, as I was already mentioning, the um, grayed out icons are very difficult to see on my screen, so I hope that it will increase the contrast uh, in somehow. But anyway, it is very nice. I can easily switch between modes here. Let's add a few content. Let's add a title. Let's build a, our home page, for example. Okay, there is the, no, I don't want a post title. I want a text. Yes, the fact that the text module is also potentially the title model. Oh, yeah. I would like to have a, a different title module for just for my titles. So, hi, db5 alpha, welcome. Okay, let's transform this into a heading. See, this is a, yeah, as I was mentioning, I would love to be able to have a module, a title module, maybe it's already there, but I didn't find it. Okay, and down here, I can add some more content. For example, let's add, okay, this is, oh, whoa, whoa, this is, <laughs> this is a little bit uh, why this is happening, because I would I would expect to add a module here, and no, I'm adding a layout. Why not? Why, why this is happening? Because it, in Gutenberg, when I'm in the back end in Gutenberg, how do I switch to the back end here? Maybe like this. Oh, duplicate. Let's go. I, don't, I just want to go to the back end, please. Let's go to the back end. Okay. When I'm in Gutenberg and I'm creating pages, if I click on that icon, which is the same icon basically, you see here, the same plus icon, I'm basically adding blocks right here. So. Okay, so when I click here, I would expect me to be able to add blocks. Why do I need to add an entire layout when I click here? That's bizarre, okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's click on the plus icon right here. Mm, yes. Um, but what happens if I just, oh yeah, here, here it is. You, I was looking for you, the black plus here, okay. Mm, mm, mm. I would love to have it right here. The possibility to add modules. I love the new icons here. I believe that most of them are now new and uh, they, they're, they're, they're beautiful, great, great icons. Let's add a text now, a normal text. Maybe if I write heading, oh yes, there is the heading, okay, that's, that's my fault. The heading is there, okay, perfect. <laughs> I can place it to the center, here. Yes, also the ability to have the quick, um, this quick uh, options like the alignment, the uppercase and lowercase and so on directly here as I have in Gutenberg would be something very, very interesting. But this is for the for the next, uh, next phases, I believe. You see here, I have at least the alignment options, the, uh, the bold and so on. It, it is so, so practical and easy to, 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 instead of having to go to the design tab, uh, searching for the heading text, okay, and going here and align center, okay? It's a little bit long. Then let's add a few more stuff. For example, we will add, oh yes, it is not this plus icon, it is this plus icon. Let's add a paragraph. Okay, why it is not showing up? Text, okay, because I, I need to write down text. Here, you see, when we use it, when we switch between Gutenberg and Elementor and DV and uh, any other builder, they all, each one uses the different terminology. You see, at least here I can easily align to the center, but I, I don't know if this is synced with the design settings you see here. In fact, if I go down here, it is not synced. It is another, another, another stuff that it adding code uh, over code because here, if I align to the center, is this one. But here, I've used this quick alignment, and it is not the same, which is weird. Why? Why not? It should be the same. Anyway, this one we can uh, get rid of this. Oh, delete. I would love to have some icons here, like in Elementor. You see. Some icons uh, just to have a quick uh, overview of the of the action that I I'm going to perform when I click here. For example, the delete having um, an X icon, yes, could be handy and useful. Let's click on the plus icon button. I'm very happy to test the V5. Yeah, as you can see, it is very very fast. This is beautiful. This is very beautiful. Oh, the fact that there is this over option. Uh, Enabled, uh, I would love to have it uh, disabled and have a, just a simple button by default. Here, this is difficult because you see, I cannot select the button and drag it and drop it, while all the other elements, yes, I can easily select them and drag and drop. The button, yeah, sometimes works, sometimes not. You see here, 
it is not working now. <laughs> it worked only once. But I have the wireframe view. Okay, so I can sw oh, switch the button down here. This is the layers view. Okay, this is great. This is a this is a, this is very helpful sometimes, you see. Like in this case, okay, button if I want to switch the positioning. Okay, it is a little bit clunky, you see. Click 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 click. Yeah, it's not perfect here, but uh, but interesting. Yeah, the I want to align this to the center. Here you see the same thing I was mentioning here when I'm I don't know why I'm I'm comparing with Gutenberg, but it, since I'm using Gutenberg a lot for my blog post, uh, I I just find it easier to use for many, many, many stuff. So if I go here on button, you see here, I can easily justify and change the alignment and the positioning of stuff. And why it is it not working right now? I don't know, but yeah, I can change the, <laughs> normally Normally, I can do that, That yes. Now it is not working, but anyway, um, it, is e it, is, it is easier, you see? You can align, normally, in general, you can do this, <laughs> even if now it is not working. While here, you need to go always inside design, alignment, and choose to align like this. Okay. Oh, the interesting thing here is that we have a quick access now to the um, editing, uh, responsive editing mode. This one is a very interesting uh, approach because we can basically, when this is enabled, we are editing uh, all the modules and content for that specific device. So here I'm on a mobile view, and if you decide to change, for example, the, the size of these headings, Let's have just a quick um, a quick change. Let's make it bigger. And if I go back now to my tablet, it is small. Beautiful. This is wow. This is this can really slow, <laughs> really slow, really increase the speed of our editing um, workflow. This is great. I love it. Basically, when we are editing in the different mode, we are changing stuff in the different mode. It is the same, I believe, with Elementor and with no, maybe not. I don't remember that, but. Anyway, it's the same thing that happens when you are editing uh, a classic theme and you change it. Well, anyway, it is good. I like this approach here. Uh, what else? Yes, there are some missing th stuff here. I was testing out stuff. For example, if I go here, there is no full width. I cannot choose to make this button full width. There is just the alignment, the spacing. And even if I go to the advanced settings, okay, phone breakpoint does not support this, okay. I cannot uh, make it full width. You see here, transform. I cannot make it make it full width. Yeah. So if I want to do so, I need to go to the advanced tab, custom CSS, and go here and make it width. Anyway, there is no way to make it full width. This button, and uh, it should be there. Mm, I also have the hover options right here. If I want to edit hover options, let's make a quick test if it if it will work. Now I am on desktop and when I hover, no, uh, this is an interesting th thing. Why do not show directly the hover effect in the builder you see here like this. Okay, it is very fast, you see, and let's reopen the, the, the builder. Okay, the fact that, okay, the preview is working fine. If I click on edit with Divi again, okay, now it's uh, it is working, okay. This is a quick preview of Divi 5 Alpha. Of course, <laughs> I just tested out some uh, a few of the of the basic modules like this. I think that uh, we can uh, we can have fun because uh, it is ready for uh, test things out. We can write to the support chat at elegantteams.com and let the team know if there are some bugs, if there are some th some stuff that needs uh, to be addressed, some um, yeah, some problems, some issues with the builder and so on. And um, let's test it out. Let me know what you think about this new version in the comment section below. And my name is Pascal and I'm the creator of this YouTube channel, which is called WP Roads. And um, I love to share news about WordPress, uh, short reviews and um, interviews all about WordPress. So if you like this kind of uh, content in general, make sure to subscribe. And if you want, you can also subscribe to my newsletter, which is wproads.com and you find there your uh, the subscription button, which is uh, this one. You can just click on subscribe and subscribe. Welcome to the WP Roads newsletter. <laughs> hope to see you there and hope to see you soon. And hope to see you soon in one of my next videos. Ciao, ciao.